So we had a couple of things left uh, from the memory lecture, uh, which were NAR-based DROM and NAND-based DROM. So uh, to get into that, I just want to point out, uh, I just want to recap um, the discussion where we left off. So we, we were looking at using a decoder, which takes in some address inputs and then decodes that in such a way that one of the uh, word lines is active, right? So that's the goal of the decoder, to make sure that one of these is active. Decoder makes sure that only one word line is active at any given time. And then at each word line, you have many bits that could be stored, right? So for example, over here, if they are, uh, say, one, two, uh, three, four, I'm, I'm ignoring these right now. So if there are four uh, uh, columns, then there would be four bits stored at each uh, row. Um, of course, there they can be many columns. In this one, I'm just highlighting the four and I'm ignoring these dots. Uh, so, and how do you store a, a one or a zero? Well, if you want, want a one, you put a transistor over there. And how are you putting an NMOS transistor over there? You are connecting the, the, bay, the gate terminal to the word line the source terminal, sorry, the, the drain terminal. So this is, uh, let's see, this is gate, this is uh, source, and this is drain. So you are connecting the drain terminal of the NMOS transistor to high, right, VDD plus five volts, and that is hardwired. No cross connection, there's no connection over there, right? The connections are highlighted bit solid bold dots. So there is no connection there. The drain terminal connected to high, the source connected source terminal connected to ground, hardwired, and we are only controlling the gate terminal by the word lines coming from the decoder. So only one can be active at any given time. Which means that if I have one active, so for example, if I have uh, say this word line active, let's make the second one active. What is going to happen? Well, you don't have a transistor here. You have a transistor there. You have a NMOS transistor there. You don't have an NMOS transistor there, which means the voltage at those bit lines, if there's no transistor, then there is no way. So for example, over here, if there's no transistor, then there is no way for that line voltage to go to low, to go to zero. It is going to be connected to high. So you are reading for that, you are reading a one here. And then next one, you see there is a transistor here. So if there is a transistor and that gate voltage is active, what is going to happen? The transistor itself is on, which means that the voltage at the drain terminal is the same as ground potentials so or low. So that's what you're reading over here, zero. Uh, so, in other words, if you have a transistor there, you are reading a low. So again, you will read a low here and you will also read, well, at the end, you don't have a transistor, so you will read a one. So you are reading 1001 where no transistor, yes, transistor, yes, transistor, no transistor. So it's exactly the opposite of what we want. We want the behavior that if you want to store a one, put a transistor over there, right? And in order to accomplish that with this particular structure, you would just have to simply feed these outputs to inverting output buffers. And as soon as you do that, you will see that the absence of the transistor there will correspond to a zero eventually, and presence of an NMOS transistor will correspond to a one eventually, right? So you can, instead of using diodes, you can use NMOS transistors to accomplish this. MOS transistors to accomplish this. So let's uh, move forward here. So our uh, lines over here, the bit lines are 
pulled low if the transistor is present, like we suggested. So we would need the uh, inverting output buffers in this case to 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 uh, invert that uh, mechanism. So by inverting that again, what we will have is if the transistor is present, we will be storing a one. If there is no transistor, then we will be storing a zero. That can only happen after the inverting buffer output buffers. Where did we see this before? We have seen this before over here. If you if I go back and show you guys a diagram here, you see all these U2 uh, not gates. Those were uh, those were functioning the exact same way. Those were the output inverting buffers. Let's come back here. So that's your uh, RAM in which you can use MOS transistors to pack a lot of uh, uh, memory in a given amount of area. Next, we have two uh, structures for ROM construction. One is, the first one is NOR based ROM. So with each of these, I want to answer a few questions. One is the size of this, size of ROM. Then I want to answer whether this is one dimensional decoding or two dimensional decoding. And I also want to comment about whether the word lines are active low or active high. Word lines are active low or active high and then I will uh, try to find out what is stored in this ROM. At each address location. So these are some of the questions that I want to answer with this, right? Uh, actually both of them, NOR based ROM and NAND based ROM. So let's start with a simple question, size of the ROM. The size of the ROM depends on the number of address bits and the number of output bits at each address. So if I give you an address, how many bits are you going to tell me that are stored at that address? The address itself is going to be first converted into a word, which word line being active, right? So if you have four bit address, you will have 16 word lines. And if you have 16 word lines, you say that the size of the ROM is 16 by something else. So in other words, size of the ROM, the first uh, size value that we need to enter is essentially the number of word lines. How many word lines do we see? We see four word lines. So size of the ROM would be four by something else. Also note that if you need four word lines, you need two address bits, right? So I'm just gonna add, add that as well. Two address bits. So two address bits, I've got four word lines. Uh, so my size of the ROM is four by something else. What is the something else? If I give you the, the four bits for the word lines, how many bit how many bits will you tell me that are stored at each location well there is bit line 0 bit line 1 bit line 2 bit line 3 so you are going to tell me four bits as output if i give you the four word line information so this is going to be a 4 by 4 that's the size of the rom four word lines four bits stored at each word line next do I have one dimensional decoding or two dimensional decoding? Note, when you do a two dimensional decoding, you are selecting one row and one column, which means that you get only one bit as the output when you read it. In this case, you are getting four bits when you read the ROM, which means this is going to be one dimensional decoding. So let's highlight that. Next word line are active low or active high. Now there is no good way of knowing this unless we actually analyze the NOR base structure. So right now I'm just going to uh, st start off with telling you the answer and then we will validate that as we analyze the NOR structure. 
So the word lines in this case are actually active high word lines. The next question is what is stored at each address location? So this is this is actually the the core of the problem. Now word lines are active high and I know that word lines you see this word lines come out of a decoder and they have always been out uh, output of a address decoder from the very beginning which means only one of them can be active at any given time and they are active high so I could have four possibilities here one possibility is this is active and everybody else is inactive right so what would happen in that case what is stored here which means I want to know what is B L zero one two and three when word lines are one zero zero zero. Now coming back to this structure, why is this called NOR? You see this the MOS transistors, for example, over here it is very clear here. The MOS transistors are connected to ground in a parallel manner, exactly the same way as we construct nor logic gates using CMOS transistors. What do we have over there? We have the pull down network, the NMOS network in which the transistors are parallel to each other. But the PMOS is in series, but, 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 but the MOS transistors, the NMOS transistors that are in the pull down network that are pulling things down to ground are parallel to each other. And if you can see here, these are parallel to each other, right? Uh, what the same potential here for these and the same potential ground here for these. So the two endpoints, the two drain and source terminals of the transistor are connected to the same wires, so the same potential. So that's why you can say that they are, uh, they are in parallel. The only difference is the gate terminal of all these transistors is coming from the word lines and the bit lines are actually uh, the, the 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 drain voltage right the drain voltage is over here and these are essentially your gate voltages Where are the source terminals? Well, all the source terminals over here are connected to ground. All source terminals connected to ground for all the transistors here. What do we have in the pull-up network? The pull-up network is actually PMOS transistors that have their gate terminal connected to ground, which means that all these guys by default are already turned on. They are already turned on, which means that all bit lines are pulled up to high voltage by default. Now we need to activate the word lines to see whether some of these bit lines actually go to zero or not. So let's see what happens when your word lines are 1000. If you have 1000 at the gate voltage, you are providing a high for this guy. So what do you have? This guy is going to be on. This is off, 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 off. Everything else is off, right? So what do you read at the bit lines? So let's see. 0001, I will write that address word line in hex format and I will also write bit lines in hex format. That's the table I'm going to fill out. So word lines in hex format is what? Uh, 0001. The least significant bit is 1 which means in hex it will also be 1. Right. What is the bit line there? Bit line 0 you all you have to do is this all you have to based on whether the transistor is present and not or not and whether the transistor is on or not based on those two things you simply have to figure out whether the bit lines are going high or low 
So as you can see bit line zero, this particular line, this guy is off. So it's out of the picture and it is this, these are already on. So bit line zero will be high. So I have one there. How about bit line uh, one? No connection here, but there is a connection to ground here. You can see that bit line zero is pulled down to zero here, which means this is going to be zero. It's going to be the same potential at zero now because of that transistor being on. Next, bit line two, no transistor present. It is pulled up to high because of the default PMOS transistors being active. Next, bit line three, uh, nothing there. It's already also high. So in hex, what can I say that to be? It is going to be B, right? One, zero, oh, sorry. I need to read it the other way. One, one, zero, one. What is one, one, zero, one? Uh, it is one, one, zero, one, right? So that should be D, right? Because I'm reading this as the most significant and bit line zero as the least significant. Now, looking at this, can you guys say, can you guys comment about whether we would need inverting buffers here or we would not need invert, inverting buffers here? Question is, do we need inverting buffers or do we not need inverting buffers? So take a look, when you made that word line active, absence of a transistor resulted in a one. We actually want the reverse, right? We want, I will place the transistor wherever I need a one. So actually it's the reverse. So I need inverting buffers here. So the bit lines will need to go to inverting buffers output inverting buffers. So let's just note that as well. Next, um, I have word line. So this is done. I'm going to move on to the next one now. What is the next one? This next one can be active one, one here and everything else is zero. So in hex, what would that be? In hex, that would be uh, zero, zero, one, zero. So that's two. And uh, Alan says, how do you know that's the intended logic? That is the logic that we intend for memory every time. Whenever I need to store a zero, I'm going to put a transistor there because uh, by default, you, you, you say by default, you would assume that all the bits that are stored are zero and only change some of them to one. So you put the transistors either using a programmable logic or you hardwire a transistor or a diode only where you need to a one to be there. All right, let's uh, keep moving here. At two, what do you have stored? Uh, I'm going to erase these guys now and talk about one. So this guy is active, this guy is active, everybody else will be inactive, right? So what is bit line zero? It is going to be low, bit line one, high, bit line two, always high, uh, bit line three, there is a path to ground, zero. So zero, one, one, zero. What is zero, one, one, zero, uh, six, right? Next. I'm going to have zero, zero, one, zero here. That means that I have a four here. And what, what am I going to decode now? Uh, transistor off, off, on, on, zero. So in this case, bit line zero, mm, high. There is a path to ground, always one, and there is a path to ground. So one, zero, one, zero. 
I if I read it in the reverse order because most significant to least significant, I have got 0, 1, 0, 1, which is 5. Next. So all these uh, uh, bit lines I am reading, those are before I go to inverting buffers. If I go to the inverting buffers, they, they, they become something else, right? I'm just looking at what is stored before the inverting buffers. Let's move on here. Last one. Erase these. Go here. Zero, 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 one. Next. Over here, what do you have? Uh, there is no, 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 no. Everything else, everything is off. So no path to ground, no, sorry, no path to ground, no path to ground, no path to ground, no path to ground. So one, 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 that would be for eight. It would be F. So for NOR based ROM, we answered size of ROM, whether it is one dimensional decoding or two dimensional decoding, word lines are active high or active low. As you can see, if word lines were active low, like this, multiple of them would be active and the NOR structure would not have one uh, one word line active at any given time. So it's the NOR based structure that is enforcing the word lines to be active high. Then we also found out what is uh, stored at each location and we expressed the four bit address and the four bit bit line information in hexadecimal characters. We also pointed out that the bit lines will need to go to output inverting buffers to get the uh, no normal behavior, which is I will start off with assuming that nothing is stored, they are all zeros, and then I will program each cross connection to be a transistor only when I'm interested in changing that bit to a one. Okay, I'm actually going to copy uh, some of these questions. and I'm gonna take it to the next slide here. I think this should be it, right? So what is the size of the ROM here? So this is going to be slightly, different. what is the size of the ROM here? Again, four bits for the word, four word lines and four bit lines. Where are the word lines? They are here here, here, and here, four word lines. So that means that can be four. And they are four bit lines. They are located some uh, at a different place, but they are still four. So your size of the ROM is still four by four. Now coming to one dimensional decoding and two dimensional decoding. Because we have four bit lines at, as output bits you can read, this is going to be one dimensional decoding again. Now in this case for NAND based ROM, we need the word lines to be active low instead of active high. Um, another difference is not all the source terminals are connected to ground. As you can see, the MOS transistors are connected in series just the way they are in a NAND logic gate. So I can't say that uh, the sources, source terminals are connected to uh, uh, ground. Now let's try to find out what is stored at each location. So for that, I'm going to, well, sure, let's do this. Copy from here and paste from here. So let's start with active low. Let's make this guy active first, active low word line, right? So the moment that becomes zero, you, we know that this transistor is off, but every else, every other transistor is on. What does that mean? That means that this bit line, which is by default connected to high, right? All the bit lines, all the bit lines are by default high. But if there is a transistor that allows it to get grounded, then it becomes low, right? So over here, we see that 
this transistor is active so this bit line will read low so I'm gonna write this low here next this bit line the transistors are in series so both of them have to be on in order for me to pull things down to zero one of them is off which means that bit line one by default is one so one there how about bit line two no transistors connected to ground right so essentially what that means is this is pulled down to zero it's the same potential as zero how about bit line three bit line three two transistors pulled down to zero so it is also zero so what is stored at that location it is zero zero one zero at location uh, one 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 zero so one 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 zero in hex is what uh, e and at E you have zero zero one zero that's two stored there now let's answer this do I need inverting buffers here or I don't need inverting buffers here wherever I had a one I have I have a transistor right you see this this is a one this is a transistor no 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 transistor zero 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 you're right don't need a transistor here no need of inverting transistors inverting buffers sorry inverting buffers output inverting buffers let's move on to the next uh, so I'm going to erase that I'm going to erase all of these and I'm going to erase these as well and talk about the next thing what is the next thing this one is active everybody else is inactive right so in this case transistor on off on on next uh, bit line zero present absent 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 right uh, sorry present one zero zero one what is one zero zero one so the address location is 1101 that's D and we have 1001 that's 9 right <clears throat> similarly I just can leave it like this and actually fill out the, the rest what would the next one be the next combination would be uh, this guy is inactive everybody else is inactive so that would transition to the table as 1011 which is B and at B what do you have stored 0 1 0 1 right 0 1 0 1 actually I need to uh, read it in reverse uh, 1 0 1 0 A is stored there next what would be the last one the last one essentially would be uh, actually hold up the last one is this is active everybody else is inactive uh, and at that location there is no transistor so all zeros right but that address is what seven Se seven goes to zero why don't we need to invert all right so you see we don't need to invert because the, already when we have the transistor so here let's go back to this one right so let's take a look at this if you have the word line one active and everybody else has inactive what happens to the bit lines the this transistor is on both of these are off both of these are on right and what are you reading you are reading bit line 0 1 2 and 3 so what is bit line 0 there is no way for it to read 0 uh, there is no way for it to uh, read a ground it is going to read a high voltage so it is reading a one here bit line one reads a low because both the transistors in that column are on bit line two by default is one it will read a one uh, sorry it, it will read a zero sorry because it's connected to ground bit line three cannot go to ground it has to read one you see that presence of the transistor resulted in a one 
present of a presence of a transistor resulted in a one. So we, we don't need inverting buffers. It's already doing the job we want it to do. Wherever you need to put a one, put a transistor. That's already doing that. That's why we don't need the inversion. All right, so I, I hope uh, that discussion was helpful. Let us move on to something else.